During the 2016 race for the White House, then-candidate Donald Trump blasted the European members of NATO for not meeting their financial commitments to the alliance. Trump shocked America's NATO allies when he suggested that the U.S. might only defend members of the alliance who, quote, fulfill their obligations to Washington. After taking office in January 2017, the Republican billionaire toned down his scathing comments, reiterating Washington's long-standing commitment to defending NATO nations. But he has been pressing European countries to increase their financial contributions to the military alliance. Under a NATO guideline, member states should allocate 2% of their economic output to the military alliance, but the funds they send to the Western military alliance directly account for less than 1% of overall military spending by NATO members. And this is something that the American military have wanted ever since the Cuban Missile Crisis in 1963. Uh, they've been itching for this and now they've got uh, a Donald Trump who doesn't take any interest and has no knowledge of military matters. Over the past several decades, European Union nations have been contemplating integrating their military forces. Last December, 25 EU member states finally signed a pact to fund, develop and deploy armed forces together. The treaty known as PESCO is aimed at preventing a waste of billions of euros by splintered military policies. Moreover, European countries seek to lower their heavy reliance on the US by creating the new defense and security cooperation network. We're now seeing the creation of this European army. Effectively, it's not just the army, it's also Navy and Air Force coming together. Um, they're calling it the European Deterrence Initiative and it was announced uh, just in December uh, and that deterrence initiative is a <clears throat> misnomer because of course there is no need for deterrence. Russia is not planning to invade Europe, it's got no uh, particular wish to and yet this paranoia has fueled uh, military spending in the West ever since the end of the Second World War and the beginning of the Cold War. Now the US government has told the bloc's defense and foreign ministers that America and other non-EU NATO allies should play a key role in PESCO. Diplomatic sources say Washington is concerned that the pact could duplicate NATO efforts and possibly jeopardize the interests of US arms makers in European markets. For the last 20 years or so, the European Union and the United States have been playing a bit of a game with the rest of the world. Uh, there's around about a, a billion people uh, live under these what you could call regimes from Brussels uh, and from Washington. Uh, that that uh, game is called good cop, bad cop. So what we've seen is uh, fine words from Brussels and usually a, uh, a rather hard fist from Washington. Um, but actually the policies have been very much aligned behind the scenes and of course Brussels and Washington are very very close because many of the biggest corporations in the United States who have the greatest wealth and power are the same corporations that are active in the European Union. The United States' concern about American arms makers being shut out comes as President Donald Trump has been promoting protectionist policies, pledging to put America first. On the other hand, breaking into the US weapons market has always been a formidable task for European firms. Some Western countries have over the past few years witnessed a rise in terrorist attacks and the number of asylum seekers who fled wars in the Middle East and North Africa. While the deteriorating security situation in the West has prompted some states to forge new military alliances, it is noteworthy that many conflicts have their roots in the interventionist policies of the West.